Grandmother Spider Steals the Sun, a Native American folktale. In the beginning, it was all dark. Only the smell of warm, furry bodies and people bumping into each other and snuffly noises in the dark. And then one day, Fox started it all off. He just started walking. He said, I gotta get away from this. He walked and he walked and he walked. And finally, he'd walked far enough in the dark, he said, ah, I'm going back. And he turned around, except he didn't. Because when he turned around, something behind him was different from what was in front of him. He tried to check it out. Didn't seem to have any taste. Couldn't hear a thing. And then, quite by chance, he blinked. And the whatever it was went away and came back. Because, of course, Fox was seeing light. But he had never seen light. And it scared him so bad that he turned around and tucked his tail between his legs and ran back to the others as fast as he could. But the next day he came back. And he went a little further into the light to where he could see this great big black thing trailing behind him on the ground. It was his shadow, of course, but he'd never seen his shadow before, and it scared him so bad that he turned around and he tucked his tail between his legs and he ran back to the others as fast as he could. But every day he came back a little further into the light, and at last he could see where he was going. And he passed between two low red sandstone hills, and he came to a valley on the other side of the world which was where they had all the light. The people on the other side of the world had placed the light into a tree, and it shone down on them. The people on the other side of the world were tall and pale and skinny, and they had great big eyes, and they walked around saying things like, Ah, oh, isn't the light within us and around us lovely? And so far, ambled up to the tree and he said this would be really great to have on the other side of the world and he put him to his mouth and we headed back to our side of the world and the people over there said look our little brother from the other side of the world is stealing some of our light let's kill him and they chased after fox and fox ran with every ounce of strength in his body and he got away and everything would have been fine except he smelled something and that something was something burning his mouth was on fire a ball of light he spat it out and it rolled along the ground and disappeared into the lake and you know, if you look into a lake to this day, you can see the light shining up at you from its depths. Fox went back to all the others and he said, all right, there is this stuff over there on the other side of the world and they call it light. And it is really cool, but I ain't going back there none. And he scampered away out of this story. So up spoke Opossum and Opossum said, I'll go, I'll bring back some of the light. The others all said, but, but, Opossum, if, if Fox couldn't bring the light back, how will you? And Opossum said, not to worry, because I'll just stick that ball of light into my long, luxuriantly furry tail. And so Opossum went to the other side of the world. And the people on the other side of the world weren't smiling anymore. Now they were... But they didn't recognize Opossum. And he ambled up to that tree and he scooped out. There we go. And he started back. The people on the other side of the world chased him. Come back here. But he got away too and everything would have been fine. Except he smelled something burning and that something was his tail. <laughs> He shook it back and forth and back and forth and sparks went flying everywhere. Many of them went up into the sky and they're still there. You can see them at night. And Opossum, well, Opossum came back to the others and he said, all right, they got that stuff called light, but I ain't going back for it needed. Who would bring light to the people on our side of the world? Up 
spoke a small voice. Children, I could go, and I could bring back the light for you. It was Grandmother Spider. The others all said, but Grandmother Spider, how will you bring back the light? And she said, I have been weaving, my children, while you have been working, and I have woven a white sack. I will bring back the light in this white sack. And she held up a perfect white ball. And so Grandmother Spider went to the other side of the world. The people had all joined hands and made a ring around the tree, facing out and glaring into the darkness, daring anyone to come and try and steal their light. But Grandmother Spider just slipped between them, filled her sack, and came back to our side of the world. For all I know, the people on the other side of the world are still there. But Grandmother Spider said, what shall we do with the light now? Up spoke Bear, he said, oh, let's put it in a tree. Let's put it in a tree. We shall not do that. We shall put it in the sky for all to enjoy. But who will carry the light into the sky? Up spoke Turkey Vulture, and he said, I will carry the light in my golden crown of feathers. But of course, as he flew higher and higher, the light started to leak out of that white sack, and Turkey Vulture smelled something burning, and that something was his crown of feathers. He gave his head a great shake, and the empty white sack went sailing one way, now ballooning big and round now shrinking to a crescent. And that golden ball of light went the other way. They're still up there in the sky every day and every night, sun and moon. And Vulture's head has been burnt red raw ever since. And that is how Grandmother Spider brought light to the world.